What is happening, everybody? Today we are back with this um, Harley Ultra Classic, which has been quite a few months in the making. Um, I've released a few videos on it already, just running through all of the footage, and this entire job, you can see it completely uncut every step, but I mean, I think it's like two hours long of just painting, so, uh, you know, it's there if you want it, but I thought we would just trim it up today and give you a run through on this job and how it all came together. So right here in this booth, it was done in, in two separate, two separate sessions. That's what I'm looking for, two separate sessions. So we had the fairing, the front fairing that I did, which has all the gauges and everything in it. And then we had these pieces here, which are primed and sanded. So they were prepped a little bit different. So I'll get into that in a bit. So what, what am I applying right now? Over the primer is a white ground coat. So that's the best ground coat for this color. So that blue is going to cover a lot quicker. So when we get to the fairing, you'll see that I use a sealer instead. As long as you get that proper undercoat value, the shade of uh, grayscale, um, it doesn't really matter what method you use, as long as you use the proper shade. Now here's the inner fairing and uh, that other little instrument cluster piece there, but um, it has a little bit of a different process as I mentioned because this is a raw plastic. So what I'm doing right now is applying some adhesion promoter, a plastic primer, but the thing with plastic is you always have to make sure it's clean. So we spent quite a bit of time cleaning it with a plastic wash and um, soap and water as well as a sanding paste to get it all ready. So since our saddlebags are fiberglass, they were covered in a gel coat, so they had to be sanded down, primed, and repair, repaired in certain places before that. But um, the process was quite a bit different from plastic. And here is our sealer going down, which is also adjusted to have the same uh, value or grayscale of our base coat on the other parts. And that's gonna allow us to hit the proper color because the color relies heavily, the blue relies heavily on what's underneath of it. So if it was a dark color underneath over top of that black, for instance, the color would be way out to lunch. Also, if we had cut throughs, for instance, if we had some black primer showing through and it was patchy and it wasn't a consistent color, it would take an awful lot of paint to cover that and it would cost a lot in material. So we're rocking with the SATA 5000 HVLP with a 1.5 on this job here. That's one of the latest and greatest guns at the moment. And we're working with Onyx solvent base coat. So it's gonna dry pretty nice and quick and hard. And since we're working with a two-tone, the solvent's a little bit better of a choice because it's a lot easier to, uh, to tape to. It uses a hardener and uh, it's pretty good to work with for this sort of thing. Now it was about three coats of paint to cover this. You need to pay close attention to all of your edges, like the bottom sides of those lids and the uh, also those speaker holes. You can see that these were customized a little bit. So those speaker holes, I had to kind of dust on a whole bunch of different angles to make sure that we um, we got paint in there. And uh, you just have to pay attention to all of your offsets. And 
something interesting about this bike, and you'll see probably near the end, it actually is one of the only bikes I've seen anyway that has power saddlebags. So, I mean, if you've ever opened up some sort of a container and you thought, man, there's got to be a better way, you're going to see that there is a better way. But uh, you'll have to wait to the end to get your eyes on that, but it's pretty cool. Now, after the base coat has had some time to dry, we're gonna um, start taping on our design so we can put on our second color. Now, it needs about an hour, I'd say. I mean, you can actually probably go to a half hour. Some guys will even leave it days or, or just a day, but um, I think that's a little unnecessary. So we're gonna give it about an hour, and then this is when the fun starts. Now this design was pretty well just eyeballed out. This is what the uh, owner had in mind, so we wanted to bring that vision to life for him. So um, we roughed it out first with the green tape, which you can see a little bit better, which is a 3M stuff. And then to get a little bit of a better line, I like to use this 3M purple tape, which is just, it's just good for giving you a cleaner line. And um, then of course we masked off the rest that we wanted to keep blue. And you can see we kind of uh, did that sloppily, but anyway, as long as everything is covered, that's all that matters. And um, you want to also, before you start spraying again and again and again, you want to make sure that that tape is pressed down hard because if you have anything creep through, that's going to be a problem because you know, you're know you going to get a, your second color in places that you don't want it. Which has happened probably to every painter out there, but you want to, you know, you, it usually only happens a few times consistently and then you kind of learn as you go that you got to spend that extra time masking up your two tones and give it that love that it needs but another thing you want to keep in mind is when you're spraying it if you're spraying near your tape you want to try and put it on a little bit drier not too wet because if you hammer it on too wet it can start to creep underneath your tape and it'll distort your line so you won't have that clean sharp line that you're after Now this is the real fun part for me because it doesn't matter how well I've masked up a job, I always have that nervous anxiety of, you know, expecting some paint to have creeped through and wrecked my top color or my original color. So lucked out here, well I shouldn't say lucked out, I took the time and it paid off, I didn't have to go back and do any touch ups, we got a nice clean line, nothing creeped through and you can see it's, um, you know, it's what we had in mind. So. Uh, it worked out. And finally we get to apply the clear coat and see how everything looks once it's all shiny and sparkly and the metallics start to pop up and look uh, magnificent. So we've got the SATA 5000 RP with a 1.3 and some glasser clear going on.
Now this thing here was the worst thing to have to spray just because of all of those offsets and grooves and rings and circles. So I was spraying from underneath, from the side, dialing, dialing in the fan a little bit to try and get that clear to flow out in those grooves because, you know, there's a fine line between not enough material and too much. And, you know, it, it worked out that we had a tiny little bit of a run starting on that, I think the closest big pod to us but it wasn't enough to really cause us any great concern. But it was definitely one of the most challenging pieces to spray just because of all those offsets. You want to do all the grooves inside first and then move out to the outside and uh, lay the shine down. Again, fine line between too much and not enough. So it really comes down to muscle memory and experience on how well this is going to work out for you. And here is the end result, and of course in the booth you can't really see how much um, this metallic sort of dances around. It's uh, especially the darker color. It looks like a black on there, but it's not a black. It's more of it's like a dark green with a lot of star flake and different metal. You can see it right there, and a lot of different metallics in there that really pop out in the sun. It's actually the factory colors for this bike. So we didn't use any sort of a custom color on it. It's the factory colors because it had to match the tank and uh, I think it was the front fairing that we didn't do or the front fender um, so we, we needed to we did some spray outs to make sure the color matched um, reasonably well it didn't have to line up 100% because it's not like they butt up beside each other but having said that we did get the color looking very good before we started so pretty happy with how this one uh, turned out And of course, here it is all assembled and, um, you know, quite a few months down the road after the paint job, everything's looking good. I'm happy with it. The owner's happy with it. So you should be happy with it too. But this is YouTube, so I know that there's going to be some people that aren't. So make sure you let me know in the comments what, you know, you'd have done differently and uh, what you thought. So thanks as always for watching. Don't you forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Check us out on Facebook. And uh, we will see you next time.